thank everyone for being here. I'm State Representative Carolyn Hughley, and I'm standing with uh, Representative Winford Dukes, Representative Al Williams, Representative Gloria Frazier, and Senator Robert Brown as we announce the Rural Black Family Day, which is going to be held next Tuesday, February 22nd, 2011, at 11.30 a.m. in the Floyd Building in the Empire Room. This is a unique opportunity for citizens and local elected officials from rural Georgia to interact with their legislators to make sure the voice of rural Georgians are heard here. We will also present an agenda for consideration by our legislature. I'll be followed <clears throat> by Representative Al Williams, Representative Winford Dukes, and then Senator Brown. Thank you, Representative Hughley. The agenda for next Tuesday will consist of increasing and sustaining the participation of African Americans in the judiciary system, preserving and enhancing historically black colleges and universities, included, including but not limited to the development of professional schools at HBCUs, and protecting and enhancing the participation of African Americans in the political process, and protecting and expanding black farmers in Georgia. Thank you, Representative Williams. The other items on our agenda will be, as many of you all might have heard, that down in Quitman County, there is a legal challenge that is being offered by members of that community who serve for the, on the school board. And their candidacy actually is being challenged. They have been indicted. We, they are known as the Quitman 10. They have been invited up uh, to become a part of this program also. There are people in rural Georgia who, uh, who's working to make sure that, that their rights as elected officials are protected. Just to give you some background on how we come here today, uh, back in October, as a matter of fact, on October 16th, uh, that was a meeting in Macon, Georgia of African American leaders from around the state, primarily in rural and small city Georgia, to focus on the election that was coming up in that November, but <coughs> also to think beyond the election, uh, because quite frankly, we saw the train wreck coming uh, as far as the election was concerned. And so we wanted to begin to position ourselves for the future. And so we came together and developed the agenda that Representative Williams just described but we also talked about how to bring more attention to the plight of black people in rural Georgia. The Brooks County Equipment 10 that was just referred to is but one example of how right now, even in 2010 and 2011, we still have these barriers to participating in the political process. And we are determined to knock the remaining barriers down. I want to make something very clear. Uh, this, in part, was inspired by our coming together, in addition to the election, was in part inspired by what had happened to our sister, Shirley Sherrod. Uh, we looked upon that as a symbol of rural black Georgia, as well as rural black people across this nation. Our agenda is not on the table. Uh, we looked upon that and said to ourselves, if we were as strong as we ought to be, Vilsack would have to pack rather than Sherrod, uh, because that was an insult, not just to Shirley Sherrod, but it was an insult to black people, particularly in rural Georgia, who know about the struggle and the history of Sherrod and what she's done uh, to try and advance the cause of black farmers and others in rural Georgia. So now, <clears throat> we come here today to make it clear, uh, we are part of a long stream of a movement uh, the Democrat, we're not, we're Democrats, but we're not just for Democrats. We are black, but we're not just for black people. Uh, our movement is deeply rooted in the movement of Dr. King and Fannie Lou Hamer and those other barrier breakers who enable us to be in the legislature. But we realize that we cannot solely depend upon the electoral process. Uh, we are going to have to expand our efforts to include a movement that will engage people in the judiciary and education and other areas with farmland, other areas of concern to people, particularly in rural Georgia. So we wanted to have this day that will be an annual day that we will focus in the state of Georgia on those issues that affect black people in particular, but people in general in rural Georgia. When we fight to increase 
the participation of black people and to retain more districts in rural Georgia, that helps all of rural Georgia. When we fight to improve and bring jobs to rural Georgia, that helps all of rural Georgia, not just black people. So at this time, I'd like to see if there are any questions that you may have for any of the three of us who uh, have presented today, excuse me, four of us who have presented today. Can you uh, give us a little bit of preview on about the, what's going to be on your legislative agenda? I think that, that the four items that I outlined, this is at the very top. Each one of them was certainly an integral part of the future progress of the African American community. When we talk about the sustaining the participation of African Americans in the judicial system, in many parts of rural Georgia, there is no representation in, in areas with high African American populations. And we, we want to preserve uh, the HBCUs, or Historical Black Colleges and Universities in this state. It is a real job just to hold on to what we have. It is extremely difficult to increase. We have a need for professional schools. Down at Fort Valley, there's a need for the School of Veterinary Science. Over at Albany, there is a need for a law school. Down at Savannah, we need a teacher's school with a graduate program in it. And also, we want to protect what we have and expand our participation in the political process. We also are very concerned about black farms, black farmers in Georgia. They're disappearing. They're disappearing. And many times, they disappeared because of various and sundry reasons. One of the biggest was for years, they couldn't get financing. That's why the Congress has appropriated money again to try and make whole many of those farmers. Unfortunately, many of those that really suffered won't be here to benefit. We have got to get back in the game of agriculture that for far so long we were barred from. That's where we're coming from from a legislative standpoint. Okay, so we're going to see something uh, possibly about financing and uh, some professional schools at the historically black colleges and universities? Certainly, we want to include all of that, certainly, all okay. of those areas. I also want to emphasize, as well, <laughs> this is not just a legislative, le legislative prescription that we are talking about. We are talking about an advocacy effort uh, that will take under consideration budget items. For example, you may not actually see a piece of legislation that pushes for a school or finances uh, as such, but you may see an advocacy effort with the budget process to increase support for these HBCU institutions, as well as other issues that have to, uh, finance issues that have to impact rural Georgia. In general, though, we see um, population leaving the rural area, white and black both. How can, how can you stem that? Is that something we, you know, we, we would want to do? Or? Well, basically in rural Georgia, we the, the people in rural Georgia are looking for the same things as people in urban in the urban areas, and that is an opportunity, mm -hmm. an opportunity for, 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 for growth, an opportunity to uh, provide for their families. We would like to use this also as an opportunity to see if we can enhance that level of growth, economic growth within our community, such that people, everybody in rural Georgia would not necessarily feel that they have to come to the urban areas or to, to Atlanta uh, for their four opportunities. Will, uh, will rural broadband be part of this maybe? Scott. Absolutely. I mean, you know, that is the wave of the future. It is one of those key components which will allow people in rural Georgia to market and their goods and their services and their well, wares anywhere in the world. And I also want to emphasize that it's not just a question of who leaves and who stays. It's a question of the quality of life for those who, just, who are there. And there are too many people who are literally stuck in rural Georgia because they have been underprepared by the education system, or miseducated by the system. And so we're going to be, a, that's one of the reasons we want to address the, this whole education piece because of that deficit. Uh, many people don't have the options to move to Atlanta. Or if they do come to Atlanta, they go directly to the, what is, almost becoming a permanent economic underclass uh, within right. cities like Atlanta and Macon and other smaller cities in this, in this state. Let, let me also say that we, we saw the great migration of African Americans from the 20s until really the 70s. Much of the land that is left in rural Georgia 
people are coming back from Detroit, New York, Philadelphia, and for the first time in the world can put their hands in some dirt and say, this is mine. And we need to be able to sustain the quality of life there where people can make a living. Far too often, the people at the very top got very rich in rural Georgia, where, where, people, where other people were deathly poor and are deathly poor. We need to just make it where you can make a living any place in Georgia, not just in the metro. One of the things that um, has been played out really just in the last couple of weeks is that sometimes cost of living is low enough there that you ought to be able to attract some high-tech industry. And uh, specifically, one article referred to uh, moving people back, moving the jobs back from India and so forth into areas with lower cost. So you, have you all had any thoughts about how you can uh, enhance the industry in the, in the area, in the small towns and stuff? That goes back to what I just mentioned. In order to attract high tech, you're going to have to have high tech workforce. Right. You can't attract high tech with people who have been educated on an 18th century model. You know, basically we have schools in rural Georgia that are going backwards, literally, when it comes to technology. And so we cannot expect to do that. But one of the other things I want to observe, as we have begun to penetrate rural Georgia, we are finding that there are many black people who have retired and migrated back home, who have skill sets that we can use to help us in this organizing movement. Uh, there were people, for example, uh, in Tifton, uh, there's a, a, a senior citizen who used to be in the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. He's now living in Tifton. He's now engaged in this process. So we're, uh, there are skills there that have been unidentified to date that we are being, get, beginning to uncover that can help us be stronger advocates to improve those schools there. And another thing I want to say is that we haven't had an opportunity to fully investigate this, but I understand that there's at least one school uh, system in rural Georgia where there's a charter school that is basically populated by people who have come back from the segregated academy. And so they are now taking those resources from public schools and employing them in a way that is benefiting the, the repatriated uh, people from the SEG academies. Uh, that kind of thing should not be happening. We, and, but when you have people who are being intimidated, as with the case with the people in Brooks County, uh, that is the kind of thing that can happen. And that's why we want to engage and empower uh, and make sure that the people in Brooks County do not go unnoticed and undefended. Point then that uh, is there still a racism card being that active there, and th there is has not been a change in the climate. Is that an accurate thing? Or I, I, I've been shocked over the last few years. Everybody just one day woke up and said there's no more racism, <laughs> and, and 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 we all know better. Last week I had a group from my home county, and a man refused to shake my hand. In 2011. He comes up as one of my constituents and refuses to shake my hand. Look, racism is not dead. It just learned to live in the back closet. Okay. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> certainly that is reflected in, in the case in Quitman County with the elected officials that are there that, that actually won the election uh, through the process, went through, won the election twice, and then they all get in, and the, then they get indicted. For, for voter fraud. I mean, you know, and now many people say that there is no need for the Voting Rights Act to continue or to be renewed. This is a clear indication that in those states, which Georgia happens to be one of, that there is still a need for it. 